Major funding for the inventors is provided by the National Foundation for Science and Thought, creating thoughts through science, and the annual financial support of viewers like you. Perhaps best known for his invention of the light bulb, Thomas Edison is anything but a one-trick pony. The man considered to be one of America's greatest inventors started his life as Alva Edison on February 11, 1847 in Milan, Ohio. Invented by Samuel the Iron Shovel Edison Jr. and Nancy Matthews Elliott, Edison was named after his grandmother when it was assumed that he was a girl. It was not until the age of seven that his parents realized their mistake and added the name Thomas to their freshly discovered male heir. Growing up in Port Huron, Michigan, Edison tragically found that he was different from the other children he saw in the streets. Beyond being raised as a female through many of his formative years, he also found that while many of the children were content with merely being given or even finding the items they required, he preferred to make or invent them out of other items. This is how he came up with his first invention at the age of eight, the Edison Superblocks, made of discarded newsprint and broken bottles. While they were considered to be fairly impractical and incredibly dangerous to a young child, the invention itself was not the important thing to the young Thomas. The seeds of invention had been planted in him, and they would soon blossom into many products that would also be dangerous for young children to play with. In his earlier years, Edison created some of his most profitable inventions, the stock ticker, the phonograph, the phonograph museum, and of course the digital camera. He remained married to his craft until December 25, 1871, when he married 16-year-old Mary Stilwell. He had opted to marry on that day so he would not have to keep track of the dates of both his anniversary and Christmas. Edison invented three children, Mary and Estelle Edison, nicknamed Dot, Thomas Alva Edison Jr., nicknamed Dash, and William Leslie Edison, who was not nicknamed at all, being by far Edison's least favorite child. Edison often would pretend that William did not exist at all, or if he did, that he was a form of dog or some kind of short complaining hat rack. That is, until 1878, when Edison invented the short complaining hat rack. After inventing three children and various other gadgets of staggering importance, it was on October 22, 1879, that Edison ensured his name in the history books, which he himself had invented three years prior, by inventing and successfully testing the Edison Funkatron, what we today know as the light bulb. Never had Edison dreamed that such fame would come to him with the invention of the light bulb, not even using his electric dream forecaster, making him quickly rich. There were light bulbs in every town, city, and fair across the United States before too long. President Rutherford B. Hayes himself was quoted as saying, I gotta get me one of those Edison Funkatrons. It's goddamn dark in here. However, it was not all well wishes to Edison for his new invention. On the contrary, it only fueled the ongoing rivalry between Edison and fellow inventor Nikola Tesla. Correspondence between the two became increasingly hostile. Dear Tesla, this is your good friend Thomas Edison. I know we may have had our ups and downs, and mostly downs to be honest, but I'm sending you this letter to show that I do believe you are, I guess, a worthy adversary. Yes, adversary, yeah, I'll go with adversary. You're a good man, Tesla. I really wish you the best in your endeavors. Right. Your friend Thomas has. Dear Edison, this is Tesla. I see you as a very helpful uh, partner in making electrical currents, even though mine are much more useful and cheaper to use. I encourage you to make your electricity a little bit better, just to, you know, stay on par with me, because I love the competition. Sign Tesla. Dear Tesla, this is Thomas Edison again. Uh, I just wanted to write and say thank you for writing back. I, I really didn't expect it, but that was nice of you, I suppose, for a jerk. Yes, I believe uh, it will be interesting having the two of us, I guess, work against each other, but at the same time together for science. This is, as everything is in my life, 
for science. You're a ball of dick, Edison. Dear Edison, I couldn't help but notice your professionalism in the last letter that you wrote, calling me jerk and other various names of unkindly nature. I would just like to bring to your attention that this is a competition, because I've just made it one. Just because you were so mean to me and I spent the night crying myself to sleep. And I would just like to say that I hate you. Sincerely, Tesla. Dear Tesla, Edison again. Couldn't help but notice you said you cried yourself to sleep there. You know, that doesn't surprise me. I always knew you were a woman, or at least a man in woman's clothes. That's right, I saw you that time. By the way, I've been working on some new electronic currents, and uh, frankly, frankly, you're a bowl of dick. And I just needed to get that out because my wife's been nagging me, telling me just to put it out there, for God's sake, you know? The two of us have been at it for a while, and frankly, you know, you're a bowl of dick, and she's aware of that, and anybody who really sees you out in your woman's garments is frankly fully aware of it. Sincerely, your mom sucks, Edison. Dear Edison, or should I say, a jerk, a man in woman's clothing or a woman? What are you, sexist? Very unprofessional. I sincerely, said Tesla. Dear Tesla, did I ever tell you about that night I was with your mother? I believe I should have told you about that, as it pertains fully to science. The science of boning her. <laughs> sincerely, Edison. Dear Edison, when you return home tonight, you will see your cat and your dog hanging from your ceiling. I hope you enjoy it. Sincerely, this is Tesla. Dear Tesla, thank you for letting me borrow your cat. Dear Edison, what? Sincerely, Tesla. The magazine, Inventors Monthly, became so filled with editorials by the two that they became almost entirely unreadable and certainly not repeatable on this program. Years passed, and Edison continued inventing, always attempting to gain the same amount of success he garnered from the light bulb. Inventions such as the larger light bulb, the electric fork, and what many considered to be Edison's crowning achievement, the triple light bulb, were increasing Edison's ever-growing fortune and fame, but paled in comparison to his earlier work. Edison always wondered about his own death and what his legacy would be. So it was that in 1882, Edison began what would be, in many ways, his final invention. In an attempt to see exactly what his legacy would be after his death, in a fit of inventing, he came up with the Edison time machine. Here we see archival footage of Edison on November 17th, 1883, recorded on the world's first VCR invented by Edison himself in 1874. This would be the first and only test of the Edison time machine, as well as the last footage of the original Thomas Edison. The explosion caused by the testing of the Edison time machine was so great that it not only burned down the residence of Thomas and his wife Mary, it was also the cause of the Great Chicago Fire. The very fact that the Great Chicago Fire began in a different state more than a decade before the test of the Edison time machine is a true testament of its function and capability. However, the blaze itself is also evidence that Thomas Edison was most likely killed in a horrendous fiery hellstorm of his own vanity and arrogance along with hundreds of others on that cold October morn in Illinois. This would have been the end of the Edison story. However, Mary Edison had a family of two loved children as well as William to look after. While watching her house burn to the ground, despite the best efforts of Edison's own personal electronic robot fire brigade, Mary came up with a plan. It was several days beforehand that Mary, along with Dot and Dash Edison, left William at the pound to attend Barnum and Bailey's show at Edison's own personal fairgrounds. While there, she noticed that one of the clowns, a rum tum 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 McSturgeon, bared a striking resemblance to her own husband. Seeking out rum rum tum tum, actually named Tom Tom Sturgeon, Mary brought him into the plot. He would be given the chance of a lifetime to leave the life of the circus and gain the life of one of America's most beloved sons. So it was that a second Thomas Edison was slipped in, and no one was the wiser. The fire at the Edison home was blamed on an invention of Tesla that went haywire, and life continued as normal for the Edisons. The new Tom Tom Edison would go on to actually not only look like the former Edison, but also to invent like him as well. While his inventions may not have had the widespread appeal of his predecessor, they did find a market. Inventions such as the electric clown nose, the joy buzzer, and fake dog shit can be credited to this fake Edison. 
Edison's family was taken care of as long as Edison was alive by the profits of his light bulbs and, of course, autograph sessions at local inventor conventions. Tom Tom Edison would die on October 18, 1931, when he actually tried to wear one of his own electric clown hoses to relive his circus days and was promptly electrocuted to a char. This time, Mary Edison let the death of her husband occur, having been dead herself for almost 50 years. <laughs>